if we're not careful, we are going to be frigging freezing tonight if I don't get it fixed. You sure it's not a fire? <laughs> If we don't get to mechanics soon, I think we're going to be in real big trouble. Welcome to the channel. We are Liam and Janine, a married couple who recently sold our home and the majority of our possessions to pursue full-time van life in the UK. Downsizing to a tiny home and adapting to living in a camper van has been challenging, but ultimately the sense of freedom and adventure has made it the most amazing experience of our lives. Living on the road comes with its fair share of challenges, from earning money to finding water and places to wild camp for the night. So if you like seeing van life from an amateur perspective, you're in the right place. November and December have brought us north, and at the moment we're travelling around the Derbyshire Dells and the stunning Peak District. In the previous episodes, we felt what it was like to battle winter storms in our little camper van as we ventured into the beautiful Castleton area. We climbed the shivering mountain, wild camped in stunning scenery, and brought some festivity to our van. But disaster struck as our diesel heater decided to pack up on us. We managed to fix it, but it left us feeling quite uneasy. It made us realise how it wasn't just water that was a commodity for van life, but also how integral warmth is, especially as we continue through December in Northern England. So let's strap in and see what adventures the road brings us this week in our converted Ford Transit camper van, Frida. Good morning everyone, we have just got up, it's quite early. Um, we actually stayed last night in a kind of more residential sort of area than we normally do, hence why I'm trying to whisper. Um, yeah, because we got a little bit stuck last night and it was all last minute, I have no idea where we are. Um, but we get, we're up now and we're gonna go to a local supermarket just to sort of get ready for the day because we don't really want to stick around here um, as nice as it is the views this morning were absolutely gorgeous so yeah that's what we're gonna do me and Liam ready to go. We are going to leave now and we've got some really exciting things planned for the next few days so yeah we're gonna leave Tesco's and crack on with them. Let's go. There's somewhere called TI Tint something or other near a reservoir. Yeah. Oh Tint Whistle. Tint Whistle. We're going there are we? Can you see it? <laughs> what is it, Liam? It's like a, it's like um, you know, on cartoons when they um, when a pipe bursts. When it's yeah, and yeah, sat and they're like it. they're like on top of it like that. <laughs> oh my god, we have to go down there and see what's happening. Yeah, it looks so weird. What's that all about there? It's a fountain. There's five reservoirs here. Yeah, and they're, they're all mills all the way down here. Oh, are they really? Yeah, that's there to aerate the water. Oh, it's an aeration thing? Yeah. And is it always this mighty? Or is no, this no, big? No. Is it just sometimes because there's been lots of water? Little. Yeah. Sometimes it's bigger than that. Really? Yeah. <laughs> we decided to go check it out, but unfortunately we couldn't get close. Looking forward to going down there. I guess because people, are, you said that people swim in there and drown, and you can see why. You can never, I like your haircut. I do. Hey, she's waiting for you, look. We have to go and see her now. Just getting back to the van now. What ended up being 
a curiosity parking over and seeing this huge burst, what we thought was a burst pipe, and this massive sort of animated cartoon style fountain coming out of it, ended up turning into a, uh, a sort of a 90 minute sort of hike around the most beautiful reservoir. We hear there's a, a vegan vegetarian bakery in this little town here, so we're gonna go and check it out. We made our way to a bakery to check out the cakes and managed to get a parking spot directly outside. We went into this lovely little family-run bakery and checked out what plant-based options they offered. We both saw the most incredible looking eggnog gingerbread pie staring back at us, so we just had to order a slice. We also ordered the chocolate orange bakewell cake and two lattes, which were served with little plant-based gingerbread men. Okay, so we've half eaten this because it's so nice, um, but I'm going to give it another go as well because we're fighting over it. It's so good, it's like an egg custard tart with a really fluffy topping um, and a nice base as well. I'm not sure what's in it, it just tastes so good. It's eggnog, isn't it? Yeah, I mean the base, I'm not sure what the yeah, base is I think made that might be the gingerbread. Oh know. yeah! I can taste that now. So it's like so an eggnog and gingerbread and egg yeah. custard tart. Oh my god. It's very good. It's okay. very difficult to share this. You will your best do. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I went on to demonstrate how well my pre-Christmas healthy eating is going so far, which you can clearly see is going great. We ate all the cake and with our bellies full we left with some beautiful vegan Baileys truffles which the owner kindly gave us as a gift. Our next stop is a town nearby where we hope to stay for the evening. We are going to go to uh, Home Firth. Home Firth is where they filmed Last of the Summer Wine and if you're aged 36 which is what i am or maybe a bit older maybe a little bit younger then you know what i'm talking about if you're a young whippersnapper then you'll have no idea what i'm talking about <laughs> so either way we're going to somewhere really 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 nice uh, i should imagine as we took the 40 minute drive to home Club, we passed over stunning scenery and high peaks it was dark, damp, but with an avid beauty. My ears are popping. My ears are popping. And there's snow. No. Yeah, there's snow right on top of that hill. That must be a mountain, do you think? Yeah, I think we're that high that it's a mountain. Well, there's definitely snow up there. Is that, that's like the tiniest bit of snow. We're in Barnsley. What the hell are we doing in Barnsley? Have we gone the wrong way? Well, no, look, Barnsley. I thought Barnsley was down south. I didn't realise Barnsley looked like this either. Can I actually go down there or is it just, it doesn't actually have like, a, I can actually turn around down there, can't I? There's someone coming up here. Let's right, see if I can stop them. Do you know what, pal? Can, can you get down there? Is it? Is it a bit dodgy, is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. You'd be able to get halfway. Yeah? Halfway down there's a chat back. I don't think we're going to be able to. Oh, okay, mate. I appreciate it. I'll go back up that way somewhere. Cheers, pal. You're gonna no 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 don't go backwards. I can't go backwards. Let him go. Shit. Oh my god. It's not good, is it? It's oh it's so I think the problem is it's so steep. And the it's so gritty you can't get a You get a, enough grit. Yeah. Now hoof it. No 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 it's alright, it's alright, I've got it, I've got it, I've got it. Oh. Like I'm, I'm like a pro, dude. I'm like a pro. We headed on down to the town called Home Firth through the most beautiful countryside roads and villages with views for miles. We went to find somewhere to park in this quaint historic town. We have just parked up, we're outside co-op and um, we've paid 60p for the car park but I've just found out that it's free parking today which is a bit annoying but it was only 60p anyway for two hours which is really cheap. Um, we are heading into Home Firth Home Firth looks so gorgeous. As we were driving through, I was getting really excited and shocked actually at how how sort of built up, but how beautifully built up it was, or it is. Um, and the outside areas of it are like proper countryside. And yeah, it's just really nice. So the looks of it, there's, no, there's nothing to say you can't overnight park here. Um, the only thing is, is we're right next to the supermarket um, so if we go around the back, because it's such a big car park, we'll go and park by the grass area and the river over there. And we can park here overnight. 
we just have to put some money on the car on on the parking at eight o'clock tomorrow morning if we decide to stay um, and yeah I think we just it's starting to get dark already I think we just stay here right in the center of home firth and then tomorrow we can go and explore the place yeah what do you reckon yeah should we do that yeah let's do that okay we ended up doing some work in co-op and shopping for our dinner until it got dark. We put our blinds up, made some food and watched Last of the Summer Wine to get in the full vibes of the place. Morning guys, we have woken up this morning. We're still in the co-op car park. Um, it was quite a peaceful night's sleep actually apart from a few sort of rowdy people coming past um, after maybe after the pub or something um, but apart from that it was really peaceful and quiet we can hear the river going past right behind us we've woken up to a little bit of a disaster um, our diesel heater seems to have broken again and we can't fix it it's an error 8 message um, and we, I mean, we haven't been out the back and under the van looking at it because we think that maybe it's a problem that you need to access it from under the van. We may need to pop off somewhere to try and get it fixed because it's really important this time of year to get it working every single night because it really gets cold. I think we need to go to a mechanic uh, because if we don't, we are absolutely screwed with how cold it's been recently. And if we don't get to mechanics soon, I think we're gonna be in real big trouble. It's one you. So maybe breakfast from co-op and go to a mechanic? Oh, it's Sunday. <laughs> oh, is co-op now? Oh no, mechanics <laughs> Co-op's all right. <laughs> anyway, we'll remain optimistic. We'll remain positive about it. We will be warm. You've got a hot water bottle. Yeah. <laughs> we opted to go wander home first and sort out the diesel heater the next day. Home Firth is a beautiful little town built up of stone cottages nestled in the Pennine Hills. It was a pleasure to walk around with cute little cobbled alleys and streets around every corner. We stumbled upon Sid's Cafe and decided to get some breakfast. So Janine and I are really excited about uh, being in the last of summer wine town. Uh, behind us is Sid's Cafe where we're going to go and have some breakfast in a, set, in a bit um, and I think the reason why Last of Summer Wine is really sort of special for me and Janine is because we were talking about it we, it was when the world was just a better place um, sat around on a Sunday afternoon school the next day Sunday evening sorry school the next day and um, sat around with your family and everyone having a nice time and having a laugh a very proper tongue-in-cheek jokes um, but it sort of gives you a warm fuzzy feeling now thinking about those times and um, that's why we're so excited about today so anyway Sid's Cafe Last of Summer Wine was the world's longest running sitcom. Um, you'd think that only Fools and Horses might be, but it wasn't, because they only had technically seven series, but loads of specials. We headed off to continue our tour of Home Firth. So we're about to go to a the only vegan sort of cafe in Homeforth, 100% vegan. We've been recommended it by so many people, different cafes and stuff around the area. And, uh, and it's a place called Lick. And it sells 100% plant-based, really, really nice apparently, ice cream. Check this out, it's um, mulled wine and what was the other flavour? Um, oh, 
cinnamon bun. Mold wine and cinnamon bun flavour. The perfect Christmas flavours. And what were yours? Mine is like a complete Christmas pudding one. So it's actually Christmas pudding. Christmas pudding, mince pie, and stolen. Mm. They're all three different flavours of ice cream. Topped with whipped cream, caramel, and chocolate sauce <laughs> in a bubble wrap. <laughs> so good. Oh. Janine and I are covered in caramel sauce. Our hands are all sticky and what have you. So we need to go and wash our hands and then work out what we're going to do next. Friggin' diesel heater is broke again. Now we've got an error eight message and if we're not careful, we are going to be friggin' freezing tonight if I don't get it fixed. So I'm going to just basically, I'm basically going to disconnect the, the power to it and reconnect it again. The old classic turn it off and on. Because <laughs> that's all I've got left. <laughs> I've just done is I've done something that I've not ever managed to be able to do with the van and I don't know what it was but after I've turned it off and on it's worked and that's prime prime the diesel here really so I've just managed to prime it and now it's chucking out do you want to show you it's chucking out yeah. some smoke chucking out some proper smoke you can smell it yeah that's all of that excess white sooty stuff where it's all just clogged up and not been primed oh it stinks yeah whoa loads of smoke oh my god <laughs> Sure it's not on fire. It's not on fire, is it? No, I hope not. So it's chucking out loads of hot air now. It was literally just smoke was coming out the bottom and it looked like it was on fire. I think it's okay, it's nice and warm down here. Hopefully it's just it just was clogged, maybe, with something and, and now we just sort of burnt it off. Oh the screen's gone off! The screen's gone black. EOA. Oh, no, it's just gone no, black. No, I can read error eight on there. Can you? Yeah. You can watch the ducks whilst I go under and try and fix this diesel here. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, the uh, stuff of the van doesn't neg me, neg me out so much, but that diesel heater is ongoing and it's proper negging me out. Um, so much so that I don't want, to be, don't want to be in the van for a little while, so we're gonna go for a walk up a hill, throw the cobwebs out, and, um, and then uh, probably go for a drink. Home Firth at night is starting to look really nice. There's twinkly lights everywhere and stuff. So yeah, we're gonna go up a hill, take our mind off that freaking diesel heater, and, um, and then come down and have a, um, a beer or a wine or something or both. We walked around the town and up some hills before coming across the church where the cast of Last of the Summer Wine, including the voice of Wallace from Wallace and Gromit, were buried. We paid our respects and headed back to the van. We decided to do a pub park up this evening, so left the co-op car park to head to a local bar for a glass of wine. We ordered some hummus before heading back to the van. What's the plan for tonight and tomorrow morning, Janine? <laughs> Come on. Janine, Janine, what's the plan for tomorrow morning? <laughs> Look at the hot water bottle. <laughs> tomorrow morning, we're gonna put on the diesel heater because we think we can only get like a 10 minute sort of <laughs> blast of hot air coming through before it breaks again. So we're saving that for the morning for a little treat in the morning. So we've got hot water bottles now. Um, but that's fine, it's not actually that cold, it's just really, really windy tonight. It's like there's a storm here again. Oh, that's slippy. Good morning. Oh, what a night. What a night and what a morning. The diesel heater is well and truly buggered. So we, today is, everything that we had planned today is not gonna be done anymore. We have got a date with um, someone called Liam the Terrible. If you follow some Van Life YouTube pages, you'll probably know who he is. And I'll explain more about that later on. But right now uh, we need to get on the road and we're gonna head to Barnsley. I don't know if you remember when we was in Castleton, in the last video, we rolled up to Castleton and there was a whole long line of vans there. And we remarked about how, 
it's crazy how many van lifers there were in Castleton. This must be like the epicenter of van life. Well, we woke up the next day and all the vans disappeared and we couldn't work out why that was. People on the last YouTube video that we put up put comments saying a couple called, called the, the Beechwoods. Yeah. The Beechwoods had, a, had their one year anniversary celebrations there. So they got, they rallied together all their van life friends and, fo and followers and stuff and had a sort of a party in Castleton. That's what we stumbled across. We had no idea what was going on. Um, but people left a comment saying that's what was going on. I contacted them after, with the after this thing with the diesel heater happened and said, oh, you know, we saw you had a, you were, you were in Castleton when we were. Apologies for not meeting you. We didn't know it was going on. But you wouldn't be able to help us with our diesel heater, would you? And they said, there's a the guy called Liam the Terrible. We know Liam the Terrible from YouTube who um, lives in Barnsley and he might be able to help you. So they put us in touch with Liam the Terrible and Liam the Terrible has just turned around and said to us, you're very lucky, it's my day off today. If you come along this afternoon, I might, have a, I might be able to fix it. So we're now going to Barnsley to go see Liam the Terrible, who's hopefully gonna fix our diesel heater. Off we went to Barnsley to meet a fellow YouTuber who coincidentally, we watched his channel avidly before turning to van life ourselves. He is a mechanic, van lifer, and supporter of the van life movement. We couldn't have had someone more experienced to look at our dodgy Chinese diesel heater. I have just moved all of the bits. Um, and let's see what Liam thinks. We've just pulled over, so he's chatting to Liam. I feel a bit funny, um, <laughs> feel a bit of funny filming another YouTuber. I don't know why. This is Liam the Terrible. I'm Liam, and this is Liam the Terrible. I'm Liam the Terrible. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is Liam the Terrible. Liam the Terrible has his own YouTube channel, and he's, his channel was one of the channels that we watched to inspire us to start and do it ourselves, without even knowing that that's what we wanted to do. So we're going to thank him a lot for having a look at a heater and doing that as well. That's Liam. Liam was an absolute legend and spent some time looking at the diesel heater from under the van. Yeah, it's nothing to do with the tube, no? It doesn't appear to be, no. I'll, I'll change the fuel filter and see how we go from there. Okay, cool. Um, that would be brilliant if you could. Yeah, well, I think that I'll try to find it, but I'll get one. That's so kind. Thank you. Cheers. Right, fuel filter. We still don't know what it is, but um, fuel filters. We're going to start with a fuel filter. He's what a nice bloke. A really good plan. One of the problems could be our fuel filter, so using the process of elimination, Liam kindly changed it over for us. We shall see. I've got diesel all up my sleeve. Have you? Oh, sorry, mate. <laughs> right, to give it another try. Yeah. You want to turn it off? Uh, unplug it, actually. Should, should we do that? Yeah? yeah. After some time, our heater finally started working. Liam did a couple of things to it, including changing the oil filter and its angle to allow the air to escape. Liam's friend kindly gave us a t-shirt from his business and YouTube channel, Sold Out Motorcycles. But there was someone eager to say hi, Liam's dog, Princess. <laughs> Hello, you. Hi. <laughs> Look at that little face. Who wouldn't love you? I can see you. <laughs> I can see you. Go on in, in, in your bed. <laughs> we topped up our water, said goodbye to Liam and the others and hit the road, this time travelling east towards our next destination. We found a park up but needed to test the heater out this evening to make fully sure it works. Are you nervous, Janine? I'm nervous and it's actually starting to get really cold as well here, so we're going to test out this heater. Um, shall I just go for it then? Yeah, so basically... Do you know how to do it? <laughs> yeah. I'm so worried that you're going to mess it's it up now. It's just that one. I haven't used it for ages, have I? Yeah, if you want to... There you go. That one. Yeah. You don't have to hold it on for so long. Well... Wait a sec, look. I'll do it. There you go. You're the breaker of all <laughs> diesel heaters. So, the process is... It says on. Yep. And then it does its thing. It then needs to the, needs to heat up. Yeah. And then we'll know within about five minutes. forty-five seconds. No, we'll know in about forty-five seconds oh, really? to a, to a minute. Yeah, maybe maybe longer. Well, it all sounds. Do you know what I'm really sick of? What? Looking at that freaking <laughs> screen. That is not the time, by the way. That's the wrong time because of how many times we reset it. 
Well, I'm sick of it turning off. You're just sick of the cold, aren't you? Mm. So, what this means is if it doesn't work, then it tomorrow, and we've just got to go and find some more sustainable way of getting this sorted. Yeah. Um, if Liam the Terrible, what he did earlier worked, then we, we're, we're, we're saved <laughs> and we may have a Christmas. So far, so good. We're still not in the out of the danger zone yet. No, though. I still can't hear the clicking. Shh. Come on, Christmas depends on it. It really does. What's the score then? It's still not done. It's still not. Really? It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll let you know. But it's on like full blast. It's still not there. So Liam's just told me that usually it cuts out before it gets to the fourth bar and we're just about to get on the fourth bar now, so we'll see. Oh no! No! You kidding? E08. Oh shit! Oh! Honestly, I can't believe that. Will we wake? Hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side, our fears are done. All the good times just begun. Let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life 